In the previous part of the lesson, we looked at how to display different buttons that the user could click on on a message box. In this part of the lesson, we'll learn how we can actually capture the user's response. Let's start with a brand new blank Excel workbook. So I can open Excel, create a blank workbook, and then head straight to the Visual Basic Editor, insert a new module, and then we can create a new subroutine called Capture Button Clicked. Before we declare a variable to capture the result of a message box, we should find out what type of value the message box function returns. Let's go for the message box function, followed by a space. And if we look at the tooltip, specifically at the end of the tooltip, it will tell us what type of value the function returns. So it returns a value as a VB message box result. That's the data type that we're going to use to declare our variable. So let's remove the message box and then replace this with a declaration of a variable, dim button clicked as VB message box result. We can now assign a value to this variable by stating its name in the usual way and then making it equal to something. When we do this, we see a list of available buttons that might appear on the message box simply because of the data type that we've used. Let's ignore this for now by pressing the escape key and instead display a message box which asks the user a question. I'm going to break this across multiple lines and use named arguments so that I can see a little more clearly what's going on. So I'm going to say prompt colon equals and then in some double quotes with me so far is my question. I'd also like to display, of course, different buttons on the message box so I can type in a space underscore again, head down to the next line, write the name of the buttons parameter, and then I can set this to be equal to VB yes, no. And I'd also like to add in a question symbol, VB question. If I then close the parentheses and hit enter, that's how we allocate the result of a message box to a variable. Despite all the work we've done here, when we run the code, there's no real clear indication that we've captured the result safely. It doesn't matter whether you click yes or no, although hopefully you'll be clicking yes at this stage, indicating you are with me so far. So if I click yes, the subroutine just ends. There's no clue that I've captured anything. We can use some standard debugging techniques just to prove that this is working properly. If I head to the view menu and then choose to view the locals window, what I can then do is step through the procedure using the F8 key. So if I begin pressing F8, I can see at the moment that the button clicked variable contains a value of zero, as it turns out. So it is initialized to a value of zero. If I continue stepping through the procedure, when I press F8 to display the message box, I can click either yes or no. I'll click yes again. I'll find that when I return to the VB editor and look in the locals window, I have clearly captured the result. It's worthwhile just quickly checking that if I stop that and run it again using the F8 key that I do get the no button selected as well. If I see that in the in locals window, I've got the value VB no stored when I click no. I can also hover the mouse cursor over the button clicked variable name, and that will actually show me the underlying value of the button clicked variable. This will become a little more clear in the next part of the lesson, which explains how you can test the result that you've just captured.